zero tax, <laughs> zero reporting, enjoy life. This is the beauty, everybody, of the Roth IRA. One, two, This is all about self-directing, whether it's IRAs, 401ks, SEP, Simples, health savings accounts, the rules, what are your options? And people, what's awesome is the world is your oyster. Invest in what you know, get a better rate of return, and build wealth. That's what this whole show's about. So, Matt, question one, what do you got? All right, this question is from Eddie. Eddie asks, Roth IRAs for minor, and question about mm. doing a backdoor Roth IRA. So Eddie says, hi, my four-year-old son will be making about $8,000 this year doing some modeling gigs, and I would like to max out his Roth IRA. Do I have to do a backdoor Roth for him since my wife and I will be over the income limit, or is it safe to transfer 7K directly into his Roth account since he is the minor? Does any of this have to be reported on our taxes? Okay, great question, Eddie. We love doing the kids Roth IRA accounts. Now, if mom and dad, if the parents, Eddie, if you guys are high income earners, and you want to do the Roth IRA, you got to do the backdoor Roth IRA. We've got other podcast episodes directly on that. Sounds like you know the strategy. But your kids are separate. They have their own income. If they're over the standard deduction, which is like, what is that now for 2023? Oof. 2024, sorry. It's like, you know, it's not, it's not more than the IRA contribution. So you got you got to do 7000 in the Roth. Yeah. They're going to be under the standard deduction. They don't even have to file a tax return, and it's off their income. So you don't need to worry about doing the back door for kids. Simple and easy, just do the 7000 directly into their Roth IRA. Now, they should have a bank account, though, because presumably they're getting this income from their modeling into their own business account, or if you're a business owner paying them, you're just going into their own account in their name, their personal name, and then from there, that money is going into the Roth IRA. That would be the best paper trail. And of course, if you're the business owner here, you would be expensing this. Now, I don't know the scenario here. They might be getting this income from someone else. I don't know the modeling gigs they do. Um, but uh, don't worry about the back door. Just do the regular Kids Roth IRA at Direct IRA. We have a specific Kids Roth app to keep it simple where the parent is basically guardian and oversees the account until they're an adult. But once they hit 18 or the age of majority in their state, they own the account and they have control of it. Just heads up on that. So if they want to drain it, they could. So it's also up to you not only to get the money in, but to, and help them with this, but also to teach them to be financially responsible and the value of the Roth IRA to, for their investing. Okay, well, and a little shout out to Kid Rock mm -hmm. all summer long. Just want to point that out uh, because all summer long, you can be paying your kids to fund their Kid Roth, the song by Kid Rock. I mean, I think it's just, it's Paul, you really just, just put a bow on this one. I just want to <laughs> wrap that up nice and pretty for you. Okay, now, Brandon P says, in your podcast, quote, how to put real estate in your Roth IRA, end of quote, May 2019, and your podcast, quote, getting a mortgage in your IRA, end quote, April 2022. You talked about partner financing for real estate in an IRA. I was wondering if you could explain and give a basic breakdown of how taxes would be realized with both parties. Example, my LLC within my self-directed IRA, not solo 401k, would fund 20% for down payment on the rental let's assume property value of 100K for simplicity, my business partner would provide the credit and sign on the loan, and for the rest, ownership would be divided between myself, 75%, and my partner, 25%. Rent right, would be 1,000 a month. Would How would taxes be recognized on a yearly basis for each party, and how would they be recognized on the, upon the sale? Love the podcast, thank you. Oof, this is such a great question. So much to say here. And Brandon, I'm going to be a little stickler, if I could, on some of the terminology you use. And this is important for everybody to take note, because when you're explaining these situations to your accountant, your lawyer, and lenders, if you use the wrong words, they're going to go for sometimes minutes or hours down a path under a presumption. So let's be clear about a few things. One, he said, um, my LLC within my self-directed IRA, I would say an LLC that's going to be partially owned by my IRA. It's not your LLC. It's not your IRA's LLC. It's an A, it's a LLC uh, owned partially by your 401k, I'm sorry, IRA, not 401k. Would fund 20% of the down payment on a property worth 100k. Then he said, my business partner would provide the rest of the credit. Ownership would be divided between myself, 75% and my partner. It's not between you 
It's between your IRA and your partner, not myself. So be careful of these little terms. Uh, thanks for your patience. So it's 75-25. Now, that's a unique allocation because you're putting down 20% of the cash through your IRA, but taking 75% of ownership. That's okay if, of course, your partner is not prohibited, they're not putting in cash themselves. You could do a 75-25, but it's a little tricky. I would make sure, of course, you're gonna be working with the law firm to design the LLC. Now, you say, how is this going to be taxed? There's gonna be an LLC tax return completed every year. Your partner's gonna get a K-1 for 25% of the ownership. Your IRA is going to get a K-1. Now, that IRA is generally not gonna pay tax, but you have debt on the property. So if there is positive cash flow at some point or the property sold, the IRA is gonna to have to do a 990T tax return on its 75% of the monthly revenue, the annual revenue, or upon sale. And there's going to be UBIT tax because there's a loan, UDFI, unrelated debt finance income. But you're saying, well, hold it. The, the partner has the debt, not the IRA. Nope, the LLC has the debt. So be aware you're going to have UDFI. I would love you to roll your IRA into a solo 401k before you do the deal. Then there's no UDFI. Finally, remind your partner they're going to get a K-1 and they're going to have to report their loss or gain on their 1040 based on their 25% ownership. So hope that helps. Um, this is when you set up your LLC, you're going to have a lot of questions you don't even know to ask. The, a tax attorney will take you through kind of a comfort letter. And these questions about taxation will be fully explained. And make sure your partner's on the call as well. You want that lending partner to be on the call so they're understanding how that LLC is being designed as well. Yeah, love it. All right, Mike asks, this is over at directiria.com slash podcast where you can ask questions. He asks, okay, I have three questions and hopefully you can answer. He just asked this two hours ago, Mike. So I'm, we're, we're like, on, we're getting to this. You we're know when we're recording. He must know. Um, number one, and he has three questions here. And I, I thought at first I was like, this is a little much, Mike. You're asking for a little much, but you have good questions. So I'm going to hit him. He says, I'm ready to roll over my old 401k, old HSA, and current Roth IRA. Those are three different accounts, Mike. I plan on using funds in several ways. A, invest in a startup. B, invest in a real estate rental. C, park money in some stocks and mutual funds. And D, possibly some crypto speculation. My question is, should I roll it into a checkbook IRA, then set up separate LLCs for each deal, or is there an optimal way to do this? Now, Mike, because you're talking about doing different assets and you have different account types, I don't know that I would do an LLC. I mean, option one could be an LLC, that you have, you rolled your old 401k into a traditional IRA, presumably, presumably that old 401k is traditional dollars. If it's Roth dollars, that would be a Roth IRA it would get rolled to. But let's say it's a traditional 401k. You didn't indicate that. Your next question is you talk about Roth 401k, so I'm thinking that's traditional. So we got traditional 401k rolled to a traditional IRA. HSA can be rolled to a self-directed HSA, and then Roth IRA is gonna be Roth IRA. That's three different account types. Now, sure, we could do one LLC, break up the dollars, uh, break up the ownership in the LLC based on the dollars from those three accounts, and you could do all four of those investments right out of the same LLC. Um, I don't know that I would do that. But that's an option. I would look at how large are these account balances. If that Roth IRA has 10 grand in it and the HSA has five and this old employer 401k has 400k, frank frankly, I'd do one IRA LLC for the 401k. And I'd probably just do an HSA and Roth IRA separate Maybe you want to just do a crypto Roth IRA or a crypto HSA at Directed just to fund that little piece that you want to do, the crypto stuff. Um, and then maybe put some money in the stocks, which you can do at Directed IRA, by the way. You can invest in stocks and mutual funds here with your account. And then maybe we do the checkbook LLC for the real estate rental. And the startup could go out directly out of an account too. See, the IRA LLC is a great tool for rental real estate but it could be used for other things as well, but it doesn't have to be. The downside of combining all these accounts into one LLC is it's a partnership tax return. There's no tax due, but it's just more work. So um, so that's part number one here. I just wanna know how much is in these accounts and then how much do you want to put in these different investments um, once we know the total amounts between the different accounts. Now, second part here. 
I'm starting a side gig in addition to my full-time job. I contribute the full 30500 into the company Roth IRA. I think you mean Roth 401k. The match goes to traditional. Plus, I can plan on contributing the max to the Roth IRA via backdoor. Awesome strategy. Okay, you're doing this. You're getting all the Roth dollars in. The 30500 by the way, he's talking about here is the 22000 sorry, the 23000 you can do per year as an employee into any 401k, solo K or your day job 401k, plus 7,500 bucks if you're 50 year older. So that's how he's doing 30,500. Just wanna make sure everybody got that. But he says, I have another question though. I've got a side gig and I wanna set up a solo 401k. How much more can I contribute on top of the 30,500? So much good stuff. And this is where we talk about the mega backdoor Roth IRA. Depending on your age, it could be well over seventy or eighty thousand dollars this year. You're married, multiply it by two. It's a very in-depth conversation, and we have prior podcasts on the Mega Backdoor Roth. Yeah, and I would just say, Mike, where you're getting at here, you need a consult with one of the tax lawyers. We can go through all of this. We can strategize a plan on how to do this. It might not be putting in thirty thousand five hundred in your company four hundred one k. Because let me tell you, and this is your third question. That's not money's not coming out until you leave that employer or until you hit retirement plan age of 59 and a half. Mm. Now, it looks like you're in your 50s. You might be close to that. I don't know. But again, we want to know this because we might say, don't put the 30,500 in there. Only put in the amount you need to get the full match from the company. That might be 10. Let's put all the rest over into the solo 401k. So, but it is true. You can do some version of double dipping here by doing the 401k at your day job and getting more money in your solo k okay, assuming you have enough income in that side business to justify those contributions so a lot of options here get a console one of our attorneys can definitely help structure this for you because you have a lot going on a lot of things you want to invest in a lot of retirement accounts you're maxing out contributions sounds like you're high income this is prime for opportunities to just structure this yeah. in the optimal way. Well, the one takeaway I'd give you is just because you can do it doesn't mean you should. And there's a sweet spot here. So finding that sweet spot is a big deal. Lots of good stuff. All right. So Kay Wostein says, based on your videos, I've gone ahead to use KKOS to create a new LLC and a directed IRA to allocate 80 grand of my Roth IRA funds into this new entity. So Thank you. You went to the law firm, got a single member LLC owned by your Roth IRA and popped in 80K. Awesome. Through this new entity, I've been able to trade the crypto and have significantly increased the value to the account uh, of the account to $207,000. Wow. Exciting. So don't know how long this, uh, oh, well, here we go. From June 6, 2023, not even a year ago, when the company was formed to the end of the first tax year, I took out, I took the initial 80K and turned it into 103,000. Um, do I need to do any tax filings for this newly created corporate? I would say LLC, stay away from the word corporate or corporation, it's not. Number two, if I need to do an annual tax filing, which form do I need to fill out? Do I need to report each of my trades or can I just report the current book value of the trades that I am still in? I have watched many of your videos as a subscriber, but it is not clear what I need to do after I've created the self-directed IRA and what my reporting obligations are after creating the new LLC. If this has been covered in one of your videos, can you please send me a link to, to that video? The one thing I would say in ongoing education here, this is the reporting aspects are all in Matt's book, the Directed IRA Handbook, and also in our podcast, the Directed IRA Podcast Series, the first 20 podcasts are built for sequential conversations of what to do in setting up, maintaining or reporting and everything in and around that. So go back to the first 20 podcasts of directed IRA podcasts and you're going to love them. Um, first, love it. 80K now worth 207. Let me give you some good news. Zero tax, <laughs> zero reporting. Enjoy life. This is the beauty, everybody, of the Roth IRA. As you build it, especially in this passive investing of crypto, there is no tax ever. Can I repeat, ever. And because it's a single member LLC, there is no tax return required. And there's no 990T required. There is no tax reporting at all. The only reporting you need to do are two things. One, every annual spring, uh, every year in the spring, you need to report to directed IRA a good faith estimate of your IRA LLC. That's it. There's a form for that. You should be getting contacted if not already. 
and that yeah. should already be done. Yep. You get, it's in our newsletter, and we send out an email blast every year to update this, and it's just a worksheet you fill out. You self-attest to it. What's in the LLC bank checking account? What's in my crypto wallet or my crypto holdings if, in your situation here? Add that up as of December 31st, and we just update your account every year because we do report to the IRS what your account value is every year. Did you make new contributions? Did you take distributions? This is some of the tax reporting we do on your account. Yep. So it's nice to have an up-to-date fair market value each year. And no tax. No tax again. This is a report to directed IRA, the custodian of your IRA. Number two, you have to maintain your LLC. And I would presume and hope you signed up for the company maintenance program through Main Street Business Services at KKOS. And for 200 bucks, we're going to do your BOI, which is your FinCEN report this year. We're going to do your annual maintenance with the state. And since you set this up in June of 2023, you're right around the corner from your annual maintenance. Do your minutes, do the BOI report, la, 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 la. Now, that's not an IRS thing. That's a state reporting and a FinCEN Department of Treasury reporting. So those are required, but again, no tax. So stay on top of those two things and enjoy your newfound tax-free wealth. All right, let's get over to Pamela Paul. Pamela Paul asked about, can I deduct my property taxes on my personal tax return for a real estate rental purchased with my traditional IRA? I have not taken a distribution from the account. No, Pamela, you cannot do that. <laughs> so um, when your IRA owns a rental property, it gets all the income. It needs to pay for all the expenses and upkeep on the property, including the property taxes, including any insurance. You don't get to take those deductions on your personal return. So um, don't be expensing that. And in fact, the IRA should be paying for it, not you personally either. So make sure that when your retirement account owns an asset, it gets all the income and it covers all the expenses on the asset. The only exception to that where you could personally pay expenses are for your account fees or for legal or um, accounting fees. But the tax itself should be paid by the IRA, in this case, for property tax. Um, and it is not something you get to take a deduction for. Okay, question from Dave PM. Um, love the show. Thanks for all of your info. Thanks, Dave. I work for a 501c3, have a Roth option, and a 457. I think what he... I don't know what Roth option means. That could be a personal Roth IRA or yeah. an option to put money in Roth money. Yeah, under, Roth dollars in the 457 or okay. the 403B. Something like profit. that, yeah. 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 I also have two LLCs, one for real estate, personally, I presume, and another for a consulting company. Great. The consulting company did well this year. I pay myself a W-2 salary of about 40K and have no employees. So what Dave's saying, Dave, I appreciate you listening to the show, so I'm gonna be a, a stickler on some of the terms. You have an LLC for real estate and an S Corp for your consulting. Well, Mark, it's an LLC. No, 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 no. It's an LLC taxed as an S Corp, or you wouldn't be doing a salary. So when you say you have two LLCs, my first thing is, why does this guy not have an S Corp? So lead with the fact. Mm -hmm. You have an LLC for real estate and an S Corp for your consulting even though it's an LLC tax as an escort. I have had a solo 401k set up with Vanguard in 2022, which allows after-tax contributions. I want to get as much money into my Roth accounts as possible, and I've heard you talk about the 415 limits. In 2023, I put 22,000 in my Roth 403b, 225, sorry, sorry, 22,500 in my Roth 403b, 22,000 into my 457, and then I put a profit sharing account with my full time and they dropped about 10K in there for me. I'm in the 33% tax bracket for federal income tax purposes. Can I use my solo 401k to put another 38.5 of after tax contributions into my solo 401k Roth until the tax deadline to get me up to the 415 limit or did I wait too long? First of all, the 415 limit or rule is the point that you have to have FICA wages up to the total, uh, up to the amount that you're trying to put into any of your retirement accounts, your 401ks, 403bs, 457. So the 415 rule is not what the limits are per se, it's that you have to have enough FICA to put in money. That's what 415 is about. So if we were doing a consult, I'd be like, okay, you only took a salary of 40 grand. The 415 limit is going to really hold you back on how much you could put into your solo 401k because of that salary level you chose on the face of it. But you also have this other W-2 you're talking about. 
that you work for a third party at their company and they have a retirement account for you. And the fact that you're doing 22.5 and a 403B and 22.5 and a 457 and there's a 10K match, oh, there's some, some unique things going on yeah. here. Uh, you only get your 22,500 once. You can have three 401Ks and put approximately 7,000 in each one but you have a twenty-two thousand five hundred dollar limit max uh, from a, a the deferral amount. Yeah, the employee Sorry. contribution. Yeah. So I'm I'm nervous about what you've said so far because you might be thinking you can double down on that by plan. It's limited by person, not number of plans. Then you've got this ten k match. Then you got your forty thousand dollars salary. Dave, I'm just going to say this. Um, I love where you're going with this, I and I like your understanding of the the general process. But you've got to get a consult, please, with one of the tax lawyers that can peel away the onion and look at each thing you're doing in totality. And you may not have a problem. You may be able to put away more. You may not be able to. And this 22.5 times 2 has really got me nervous, but I don't have all the facts. Any of my tax lawyers would be able to help you out here. Get to kqslawyers.com and, and do a consult for an hour. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and as, as quickly as you can file extensions too, because there are some options maybe for last year still. Yeah. And I think this is one of those things where they're, someone's taking multiple strategies and piecing them together. And a lot of these strategies don't work in conjunction with each other. For example, the mega backdoor Roth is a 401k strategy typically done by after tax contributions. And it only works in a solo K or a business where you don't have employees and you're the owner. It's a little nuanced and it's awesome. Um, but also when you have multiple jobs with 401ks, you can have that 69,000 per 401k or employer sponsored plan. But like Mark said, you only get one max out of employee contributions of the 22,5 for 23 or 23,000 for 2024. So how do I get 69 into all the rest of those employer contributions where there's not a cap on that? And so, and there's some debate on the after tax and how you do that, but that's why I said we, you need to get a consult on it. A lot of different moving parts. And um, I got tripped up on the 22.5 in both scenarios too. I'm like, ooh, I don't know if that's a, a mix up or if you're okay on that because maybe the 403B and 457 rules are a little different because they're government plans as opposed to the typical 401 case. All right, well, Carol asked, um, she says, I'm a GP in a real estate syndication invested with my personal money. Can I also invest in the same syndication as a limited partner using my SDIRA funds? Oh, I love it. <sighs> gray Wait, we area. Finally got a good, it's gray? Yeah, I was going to say, gray. finally, we got an easy one. It's a syndication. She's the general partner. Oh, she is in a yeah, syndication? Yeah, she's the general partner in the real oh, estate syndication. Man, that's very rare. We're getting a GP of a syndication. Thank you. Yeah, we get them all the time. Well, I mean, Whatever. with this... Okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. You, you threw in a, when you're the GP of a syndication. You, yeah. So yeah, you, you're running the deal basically, right? You're raising the capital. You're the manager. You're getting an asset under management fee. You're getting a carry or a profit sharing, you know, take on the deal. But then you also have investors putting in the money. And that's what Carol's asking here is, hey, I'm the GP. I'm running the deal. Maybe it's a multifamily deal or it's a private equity fund. Didn't, didn't really say here. But um, can I also invest my IRA as an LP? And when people say LP, I mean, it could be... LLC, this is the investors. But could I be just like an investor and come in with my self-directed IRA funds? Yes, it it's depends. possible. Yeah, it depends. <laughs> and I know if I'm two lawyers, you love to hear that answer. Yeah. I know, Carol. But let me say it's possible. And but you got to make sure the fund's structured that way. I've done this a lot with clients over the years. And since you're the GP, you can probably change the plan, the, the fund documents if you need to. Here's the issue of why there could be a privileged transaction. Let's say that you put in 100K as a limited partner into the fund. Well, let's say as a general partner, you have a 2% asset under management fee. Well, you just put in $100,000. Does this mean you personally get to make $2,000 because your IRA just put in 100K? See, there's the problem. Because you invested more money, you personally make more money. And the IRS doesn't like that. That could cause a self-dealing prohibited transaction. Also, let's say that you then turn that $100,000 into $110,000. Do you also get another 20% there of the carry? You know, that $10,000 gain, 20% of that, two, two grand there. Do you also get another 2,000 there? So this is where you got to make sure the fund documents either waive 
any compensation for you as the general partner when a disqualified person's IRA invest. I've had some clients do a side letter as to this to say we're not going to, management will not take compensation from their own IRAs. But this is a complex area of the law. This is not 101 like some of these other prior questions is because my IRA pay the property taxes or can I pay and take a deduction? That's cut and dry. That's easy. If you're someone syndicating, raising a lot of money, you should have good legal counsel already. Um, our team can help with that question. And um, so just know it's possible. Yeah. There's just that compensation issue we got to overcome. Yeah. And the total ownership of yourself as GP and limited it, it, that's gonna that's a factor too that, that's a major factor Gee, are there other the people lower in there more options yes and, is there other people in that yeah. gp entity or is it just you 100 percent? that could be a problem if it's right. just you 100 percent. luke wps says long time listener first time caller okay edited for clarity and specific concerns i have been intrigued with the self-directed iras just set up my account with directed ira now i'm going to go real quick he's setting the facts not a big fan of real estate yet in parentheses and plan to direct my investment money to small business purchases so when he says investment money, he means IRA. So he plans to direct his IRA to small business purchases in the near future. I would like to run these operational businesses inside my self-directed IRA. Seems like a no brainer for great returns in a tax-free vehicle. After the C-Corp tax, of course. And he says the blocker corp mentioned in Matt's book that I autograph on a regular basis. I do know I cannot personally take a salary from the businesses inside the IRA, but here are my concerns before diving in. Okay, so everybody, real quick, very impressed with Luke's understanding here that if you have an IRA and you wanna do an operational business, open up a restaurant or a cupcake shop or a landscaping business and make great rates of return and fund it with your IRA, go for it. You're gonna use a C Corp to block what would be what's called the UBIT tax. And that's great, you could, even though you're still paying a little bit of tax to operate a business with your IRA, doesn't mean that paying corporate tax is a bad thing. You're looking at your overall ROI. That's the goal here. Luke sees the vision, but it's two questions. Can I still participate in day-to-day -day operations as long as I receive no compensation? Uh, no, no, sorry. You can sign checks in the big scheme of things as the president of the corporation, but you're already playing with fire. That business needs to be ran by independent management and employees not you in any way, shape, or form, even if you're not compensating yourself. Number two, this is where partnering with someone could work, but it's interesting I say that with question two. Is it prohibited to own part of the C Corp stock in with the IRA and in the IRA? Okay, see, the way you said, is it okay? I'm gonna restate your second question. Is it prohibited to own part of the LLC C Corp stock with my IRA. So personally own part of the C Corp and the IRA own the other part of the C Corp. No, that's not prohibited, but it has to be structured properly. How much money you put in has to be pro rata based on what the IRA puts in. Your services cannot be a factor. It does not unlock the ability of you to work in the business in any way. So uh, the, the times when we see clients co-fund an entity like this is because they need extra capital. So they're going to put in some of their own money. They're going to put in some of the IRA money to get the deal done. Not a problem. But I would say this. You do not want to own part of the C Corp. What you would do is set up the operation as an LLC of which you own a percentage if you go that route. Then your IRA would open a C Corp, which would be the other partner of the LLC. So I'm talking about two entities. I'm sorry, but you do not want to own the C Corp personally because you're paying C Corp tax unnecessarily at that point. So use the C Corp blocker for the IRA then form a joint LLC between the C Corp and you if you choose to go that route. And once you get on a phone call with one of the lawyers, you're going to love it. They're going to answer all these, the possible pitfalls, lots of opportunity. If it's done correctly, you say, and I completely agree. So get a call. Yeah, I just say... Um, you know, Peter Thiel is one of these examples here where he uses IRA to invest in PayPal and he worked in the business. He was the president and CEO, but you know what? He was like a one sixth owner. And so a lot of people are like, well, Matt, Peter Thiel got to do this. He has the 6 billion Roth IRA. Yeah, we freaking love it. He's, you know, exhibit A of what you should be doing. And I love that you could invest in your own businesses. Don't feel like you just have to do real estate. A lot of people love real estate, but if you're a business person, you want to invest and grow small businesses. I freaking love it. Do that. 
Um, but just make sure you're not over 50% between you or your IRA because then you won't be able to work in the business. So one great strategy, which Mark mentioned there would be get a working partner that works the business. You can have oversight, you know, and if you, uh, and, and you could still be, have someone run it. And whether this is a paid person or have a percent ownership, you can sell oversight, decision-making, administrative functions, but you're not in the business working there every day. You're not in the shop, in the office, whatever it may be, working, running the business day to day. That would cause a prohibited transaction, whether you're paid or not. Now, on the other hand, let's say there's three partners. Let's say the three of us, me, you, and Mark partner up in this deal. And you put your IRA in for one third and Mark and I put our, our, our IRAs in and we're like, all right, what was his name? He's uh, our new partner. Yeah, what, I'm sorry. I've already, I already right. replied and closed out. <laughs> new partner, you you can work the business. You can yeah. take a salary and be day-to-day -day because you're less than 50%. So the 50% issue is going to cause problems if you're owning more than 50% and working it. But if you can get below 50, have other non-disqualified people partnering on the deal with you, it could be a great way to do it. I have lots of clients IRAs that invest in small businesses. I have a lot of private equity people that use their IRAs and their funds or as co-investments on deals where they're investing in businesses, but they're not running them. They're having someone else run the day-to-day -day operations. So um, lots of different flexibility in that ways there. You kind of know the rules. You got a great start on the rules, but uh, we can just kind of nuance this to your situation and give some options on how to, be, how to pull it off. The last thing I would say is most people know Mark and I don't like C corporations, but here in an operating business, we're only paying corporate tax. We're not paying double tax because if your IRA owns it, after you pay the 21% corporate tax, it goes down to the Roth IRA, no tax, because it's a dividend to a Roth IRA. Roth IRAs don't pay tax on dividends. If you were individually owning something with a C-Corp, 21% corporate tax, and then 20% dividend tax when you get it personally, that's the double tax. Mm -hmm. So we're only getting that one level of tax there when we use the blocker. I just want to make sure everybody picked up on that, because um, generally we crap on C-Corporations. Yeah, so. yeah. Well, you had a lot to add to that one. I didn't expect that. But I know. I like stuff. that question. I like yeah, that question. You shouldn't ask that one on the end. That was too good Ugh. a question. But thanks, everybody, for listening. And thanks for all of you who submitted your questions. If you've got future questions for the show, get over to directedira.com slash podcast. Where you can ask your question right there. We'll be back, of course, next week with another amazing show, helping you take control of your retirement. Until then, stay calm. Self-direct on. <laughs>